Hello, I'm Helen from the Writing Development Centre. It depends a bit on what subject you're studying, but you'll probably be doing quite a lot of writing while you're at university. It's one of the main ways that we assess your learning. Um, academic writing is quite a strange form of writing, though. Um, it's surrounded by quite a lot of mystique and it can feel quite an uncomfortable way to express yourself at first. Um, writing is a very personal thing, after all. It's a way that we express our identity and who we are. So having to write in this slightly unusual formal way can feel a little bit uncomfortable at first. You might have heard of some of the rules of academic writing, such as never write I in the first person. You should always write in the third person or never use contractions. You should always say it is instead of it's. Um, not all of these conventions are true all of the time, though. So getting a feel for academic writing is going to take a little bit of time as you get used to the way that it's done in your subject. So academic writing is admittedly a bit strange. I think it might help if we think about it as a particular form of writing for a particular purpose for a particular kind of readership. So let's look a little bit more about what that might mean in practice. The first thing to note is that there's no such thing as academic writing. It's actually slightly different in each subject. After all, English literature students think about different things in different ways than engineering students and the way that they write will reflect that. It can vary also between different genres of writing. An essay is different from a reflective piece, is different from a report. And you might want to watch out particularly if you're studying more than one subject, that you don't get sort of caught between the two of them. So what matters above everything else, no matter what subject you're doing, is clarity. The reader needs to be able to follow your thinking so that they can assess the quality of your learning. So. If you're trying to show that your thinking is clear, then we use very precise language. For example, if you write oh, lots of, or it was really important, we can't quantify that. How many is lots of? So there's a, a vagueness there, which we want to avoid in our writing. Similarly, we want the reader to be very certain what we mean by a particular word. So we use an awful lot of, well, what other people would call jargon, but is actually technical terms that have a very precise meaning so that you can be both sure that you're on the same page when you use a particular word. Another area is very structured language so that the reader can see the structure of our argument. So we're using an awful lot of signposting words like however and therefore and on the other hand so that the reader can see how our ideas link together. We're also using probably slightly longer sentences than we normally would because we're trying to unpack what are after all quite complicated ideas. The other thing to think about when you're developing your academic style is how do I want to come across? You want to use language that presents yourself as a serious, thoughtful person who's been very careful and professional about the work that they're putting together. So, for example, uh, we avoid contractions because they're a, a feature of spoken language. We say it's instead of it is, partly because it's faster, but with academic work we want to give the impression that we've taken our time over it and taken care over it so we avoid that kind of shortened language. We also want to come across as very objective logical people so we're going to avoid emotional or exaggerated language like it was incredibly important or obviously this is the case because we want the reader to be persuaded by the quality of our reasoning rather than trying to sway them through their emotions. Academic language is also, it's quite practical. So if there's a shorter way to say something, we're probably going to take that because we don't want to waste our readers' time. So you'll also find that the shorter version of saying something is actually slightly more formal than the longer way. For example, if you think about the phrase to look at, that's three words. Whereas if you say to examine, it's both shorter and it comes across as being slightly more formal. I think people get quite self-conscious about their academic writing style and rather than writing which is too informal and colloquial, I actually often see writing that has gone the other way. It's almost over the top when people have tried to sound more academic. So you can overdo any of those things. You can write sentences which are far too long and difficult to follow. You can sprinkle your work with signposting words or technical terms that are there to sound good rather than that they actually mean anything. So it's really careful to keep that tone somewhere in the middle. 
So if you think about how you're presenting yourself at work, you wouldn't go into the office in jeans necessarily. That feels a bit too informal to give a really professional um, point of view. But it would also be a bit strange to go into work dressed in a ball gown or a top hat. You'd wear something relatively neutral like a suit. So if you think about it that way and pitch it somewhere in the middle, if it sounds really strange to you when you're reading it out loud and it really doesn't sound like you at all, it might actually be that you've gone a little bit over the top and you can speak with a slightly more natural voice in your own academic writing.